Kate Green, showrunner, director, producer, creator, and a couple of other things when it comes to NarcoLeap. The evolution of season one into season two, what is the difference that uh, you can tell us about? The, uh, the main evolution with Kelsey is that she really is starting to use her power and fine tune it and really take control of what she's able to do. Um, in terms of her mom, Helen, I am thrilled with how that character has evolved. Um, in season one, she very much was the nagging mom and very one-dimensional um, and I'm thrilled that this season we've created another layer to her character and kind of a backstory that explains that that was actually just a bit of a facade that she had going on and there's there's a much deeper depth to Helen. And did you know that in season one or did you guys between the break go we're going to make this change? Um, yeah it was it was it was something that always bothered me about season one. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that character to be so one-dimensional, but it just kind of, that's the way it, it ended up being written and worked out. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a conscious decision within the break that I was like, okay, this needs to change. Like this is, you know, really strong female character that needs to have, have more to her. Creating uh, yeah. content made here with homegrown talent. Why is that important? on so many different levels. Narcoleap, uh, when I think about Narcoleap and the, the BC film community, I, and the, the, how they've rallied around this project, I actually start to get like a little emotional because there's been so many people that have helped and supported and from, you know, from when I uh, created it in the Women in Directors Chair to, you know, Kessel Camera and like the Equipment Houses and Whites and like all these people that support this project. And it's important because at any moment, it, something could happen. I mean, we live in the times where anything could happen, but our dollar could decrease, the tax credits could change, the, the borders could close. Like our service industry is a wonderful thing to have in BC. It pays a lot, a lot of mortgages, it pays a lot of braces and college tuition fees for a lot of people and it's, it's a wonderful thing that we have here in BC and I hope that it continues forever. But if we don't have shows like Narcoleap or other shows that are Canadian content or BC content to support that, um, it, it could all disappear and it did like five or six years ago. It all like overnight. It, it, le it left and we, we were stuck kind of scratching our heads going, what do we do now? So having these stories too that are content that comes from here, from our writers, from our directing and producing pool here in BC, it's, you know, we're not just a service industry. There are a lot of creative people here and we need to fully and completely support that. <laughs> Let's talk about the last scene. It was done as a one -er. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Define to me what that means and why did you do it that way. Yeah. You can tell me about the circumstances uh, and then also tell me what you intended to do with it and also like, you know, the serendipity of just like sometimes things yeah. work out. I always felt like I was racing the clock and I think most directors or filmmakers feel that way. And that day in particular, um, we were shooting pretty much one scene, which was the final scene, which I wrote so it's all self-inflicted pain. <laughs> so um, it was such a, an emotional moment too because it was this character, Kelsey, that I'd lived with for almost since 2015. And so it was like, we did one take and we were running out of time. And I was trying to get like, okay, like let's just get a master. Let's get, you know, let's just get something in the can. Like we were so out of time and we did it and like I was like at the monitor like crying I was like oh my god I think that's good like I think we don't you know need any more because <laughs> it worked out perfectly like just she's saying goodbye to everybody and the camera just follows her and it's like 
it it was not meant to be that way. It was it was you know I was going to cut to reactions and everyone looking at each other and you know looks 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 you know? and then like she gets into the Chevelle and drives off into the sunset. But after that first take, I was like, oh my god, like that was it was perfect. You do a lot of roles uh, in this show. You a lot of positions uh, contributing. What lay that out for us? What do you do? So created the show, I produced it and got the funding for it. I wrote one of the scripts this season. I directed season one and two. I sweep up cigarette butts and I empty garbage cans. Uh, chief bottle washer, yeah, I, I do everything and anything that I can. And you also appear in some capacity. Maybe. Maybe, like you don't know, you're gonna cut yourself out or like? I might cut myself out. <laughs> there, was a few, there was a few fans online that wanted me to do a cameo. Okay. So you will have to watch the series okay. and see if I made my cameo or not. On a bigger picture of sure. why people should be watching this. Um, well, Narcleaf is the story of a young woman who's really coming into her own and she's kind of figuring out the world and life and love and relationships. Meanwhile, she's got this really weird thing that keeps happening to her. And so I think that the story of Narcleaf is really about a young woman finding her inner strength and her, her own superpower and how to use that. And it kind of feels like we all need that these days. So I think that's why people should watch it. They'll get inspiration and kind of, I think, find uh, it relatable in, in a lot of ways.